So what is it like juggling acting, making YouTube videos, and producing films with high profile actors? Well our friend Henry Alexander Rukerol does all three with the cunning and the grace of a swan that was raised by a pack of ninjas. And we sat down with him today to talk about being a creative professional. But if you want to learn his secrets, why don't you hit that like, smash that subscribe, and stay tuned to find out. Hey, so uh, today we have uh, a good friend, Henry Alexander, who also goes by Henry Alexander Rukerol, who uh, does a lot of stuff. I will I will defer to you to do an intro <laughs> about your many facets of your life. Hi, everybody. I'm Henry. And yeah, I do some acting, a bit of producing, some event managing, and quite recently started creating YouTube videos as a kind of creative outlet to see what happens behind the scenes, really, with everything. If you want to learn a bit more about me, you can go check out my YouTube channel on Henry Does. Go check out my Facebook page. You search Henry Does you find me that's where I do some gaming I find that you get a lot more traction gaming on things like Facebook than you do on Twitch and YouTube these days because they're really trying to promote and get a lot of viewers and uh, quite recently Mixers just joined Facebook gaming so that's exciting so I'm really excited by that side of things that's that's just Dang, a little bit about me <laughs> well and this is the funny thing is that like you and I just we had a quick conversation about a week ago yeah and you commented on one of our videos and I was like oh hey let's let's talk because I, I looked at your channel and I love your stuff and I'm Thanks, I man. noticed that yeah with you you're always thinking about those things thinking about like oh well these integrate well with this and like this is a good way that like people are trying to promote and like the platform itself is trying to promote so uh i you a creative genius i'll say <laughs> well, that's, that's, uh, you that's know <laughs> i mean I, I like the compliment don't get me wrong so yeah so i think it's important to just constantly as creators especially on youtube is to be ahead of the curve because it's like the algorithm and all platforms are constantly changing and if you just don't keep up with what's going on you're just never going to progress there's like so many other guys i've seen who have just kind of gone and done like i love gaming but i've realized that youtube is so saturated for gaming at the moment that there's no point mm -hmm. in trying to be a live streamer on youtube unless you've got a really unique us which I tried to do with uh, my Mario videos. <laughs> oh my god. But I thought, you know, a good way to time somewhere new to do it would be on Facebook. Everybody that doesn't know, like Alan, the co-host of the channel, he's been doing for a long time, probably like two years, two, three years now, uh, a Super Luigi Let's Play for this convention that we're a part of. And then I instantly, like I was looking on your channel, I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. And then I saw Mario plays. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is the thing. <laughs> and so like you do a really good Mario, but especially like it was kindred spirits. And I'm just like, he knows this is the comedy. This is the funny. <laughs> I, I immediately was super happy to see that. On top of all of that kind of stuff, I mean, that is something that you mentioned on your channel is the fact that you are also a professional actor and have been producing short films. In particular, you guys recently did a short film that was pretty ambitious, I gotta say. Like, looking at it, it looks stunning. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So um, the film you're talking about is Extinction. Uh, it was done basically with some very high profile actors, one of them being Emma Thompson. And yeah, so we filmed that just under a year ago. And we released it on the 1st of May because the 1st of May was basically a year since the government announced a climate emergency in the UK. And oh, wow. yeah, yeah, so we just, you know, it, it, was an it was an interesting topic, but it's also, you know, a comedy. We wanted to bring some light to a very important topic. So yeah, so it was really, really exciting film to create. And the whole process was insane because it was like, I'd produced films before and been working on films and stuff um, as an actor and a producer. But the kind of scale we did this on was much bigger than we had done in the past. And we had to kind of raise funds for it and stuff. And it was, yeah, it was, it was a challenge, shall we say, because effectively, mm -hmm. Getting Emma Thompson on board in the beginning was just insane. You know, like we're we're not mm -hmm. we're not big Hollywood producers or anyone. We we're just you know kind of guys creating short film. We took a chance and we reached out to Emma Thompson's uh, personal assistant, and you know it was about a subject that we knew she was passionate about and we just reached out to her and said hey would you like to be in this film you know it's a satire but it's funny and it's also got a very important message and yeah she was up for it she basically turned around and said yeah i can do this one date of filming and we're like great we will work around you emma and then basically off the back of working with emma i mean well getting emma on board we were able to get some other relatively well-known actors as well in the film and and so yeah so it was just kind of like a snowball effect once you have that one name you could then go to agents of other actors and then basically say hey you want to be in a film with emma thompson and then most of them would be like yeah so so we paid all the actors fairly but obviously we didn't pay mm -hmm. emma thompson's rate she basically did it for free for us like there's no <laughs> yeah. you, you know you never you say you never want to meet your heroes um mm -hmm. because sometimes you kind of meet these high profile actors and they can be a bit 
bit of just just a nightmare you know very self-involved and stuff and she's so down to earth and genuinely a really nice person she even like she got to set she was asking oh do you want me to get the tube over to set we're like no no we'll pay for a taxi to come over and she like made her own costume like she was just like mucking in and like trying to help out as much as she could and you're like you're emma thompson you won an oscar (laughs) you don't need to do this (laughs) that is so cool Oh, man. Yeah, because especially you always hear that stuff about like how they want everything to be done at, at the professional level. And it's yeah. really nice that she not only knew the, the, that this was important to her, but also that like the, the point of it is more important than the stardom and all that kind of stuff. Do you feel like for uh, Extinction, do you feel like that was a, a part of the process? Like it was, do you feel like it was more passion based because of the topic? Or did you feel there was a little bit of that? Uh, well, okay, it kind of needs to fit this skew or fit this narrative. Do you feel like it just, you, ha- you guys had a lot of creative liberty over it? Because it was basically our baby, if you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we had a lot of creative control over it. But we also realized that we didn't want to... So, the you know, it had an important message, but we didn't want to kind of overdo it and push it too much and just make it a very sappy film. So that was always... Con- like in our minds and cognitive, we were always cognitively aware of it. You know, we wanted to make sure that, you know, it would still be an enjoyable film to watch. Yeah, we sure. don't want to be like, this is a message, jam it down your throat. It's like, we wanted to reach people that now maybe wouldn't necessarily engage with that sort of content. You know what I mean? Like if we just said, hey, we've made a climate change film, automatically you'd just be like, oh, it's a probably a documentary about climate change. And if you're not interested, mm-hmm. you're just not interested. Yeah. But if you say, hey, we've made a funny film uh, with Emma Thompson yeah. in that discusses the climate, that sounds a little bit more exciting. Oh yeah. At the end of the day, it was our project and we wanted to create something that we thought gave a positive message as well. And and yeah, and we did. Oh, and it's mm-hmm. so funny. So <laughs> we got uh, lambasted by um, The Telegraph. Oh, really? I didn't realize they were this right wing, but apparently quite a right wing uh, newspaper in the UK. Also, not The Telegraph, is this The Telegraph? The Times, sorry, oh. sorry, it was The Times. Dang. Breitbart picked up the news article And then they wrote a piece on us. And obviously they're very um, anti-climate change movement. Mm But it's cool. Like, I mean, I in my I, I loved it. I was like, this is great. You know, like these aren't the people we're trying to convince. I mm-hmm. guess like they can they've got they've made their mind up. They don't believe in it. That's fine. I'm not I'm not here to try and change them. But some of the comments, man, they they really went after Emma Thompson. I was like, Oof. really? She's an actress. She's not a political leader, so she shouldn't be held to the same standard, uh, which I think was pretty unfair. But that's yeah, that's. That's my little rant on that. I'll stop. No, that's crazy. Especially that that's the interesting thing that you won't realize where things go or who who ends up engaging with a piece of content. And uh, yeah, that is that is crazy, especially for the film that like like you said, like it is it does feel like that uh, uh, the, the comedy element is strong there of the absurdism. And I think when you were describing it to me, like when we were talking a while ago, it was like it is showing the absurdity of both sides in a way. And it really, it really does that really well, and has the uh, archetypes of both sides played as people. And so immediately, you're like, you can't take that completely seriously. Like they can't embody the entire side. So it, it does it really well. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, thanks very much. Well, I mean, it was it, we wanted to create, you know, there were obviously caricatures of each side, and we wanted mm-hmm. to show both sides. And so we wanted to show that, you know, some climate change activists can be a bit crazy but funny, as mm-hmm. can you know, some politicians just be like completely absent and uh, devoid and delusional about the world. (laughs) (laughs) That that was our aim, you know, we wanted to show, hey, everyone's crazy on both sides, but you know, the world is still burning. So let's focus on that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Once you've done one short film, no matter what it is, or even just created content or filmed, you know, with with the subject matter and maybe had more than one person involved, it's just scaling that up. It was still a relatively skeletal team. So, you know, it wasn't a huge, Mm -hmm. huge team. I can't speak for like big blockbuster movies, but I, it is interesting to see how once you know the mechanics of how filming works, you know, who's involved, like a DP, a uh, director of photography, for those of you that don't know, which is basically the cameraman. Once you kind of know the, the what am I trying to say? Like nomenclature? Yeah, basically, once you know all, all the kind of specific roles, you can just grow it. Mm-hmm. That's essentially it. Once you know who, who does what and how they do and then how, and let everybody do their job. Like, don't try and get involved and micromanage. That's the worst thing anyone can do. As long as you've got the right person to do the job and you can trust what they do, 
don't get involved. Alan is like the biggest proponent of that. Like if somebody like if he'll, if he's doing camera and somebody tries to like do something, it's like, hey, this is this is my job. Like, let me let me handle it because he's very good at it. Particularly, I really like that you said that making any content is very similar where when you've done it, you know the process that yeah. there is at, at the lowest level. There's writing a script or having an idea, going and shooting it, editing it. Yeah. like having the three st stages and when you kind of build those out like okay well now production can get bigger because you have a dp you have uh like script supervisors you have like you have to do stuff in between takes and like have a gaffer and lights and stuff like that that when you build it out more it becomes more complicated but the basics are the same for us in particular i mean for you and i that we make just content on the internet for yeah. youtube that's my biggest thing is having the lowest barrier to entry to be able to i have my computer i have my set up like oh my god everybody at home it took me forever just to set up this bad looking background back here like look how <laughs> awful this is but like when you actually have an area that you feel comfortable filming in you have your guitars behind you and they look like really it looks good like your setup <laughs> nice and so that's when you have that that it's easy to flip on the camera and then just start shooting you then feel more empowered to make stuff and just make make those three steps writing filming and editing a little bit quicker For you in particular, I think that that's important because how do you feel about going from being a producer, being an actor, like professionally, to then making your own stuff? It was a, it just just a completely different ball game. And for me, the mm -hmm. one thing I found super exciting about it is to kind of have not control, but have kind of be in the whole process, you know, from the setting up the camera, filming yourself. Like as an actor, you're told where to stand, you know, you have your lines, you can create a character, but outside of that, you've got your role, for example. Mm -hmm. Or if you're producing, you know, you're getting people, you're making sure the right people are doing the right jobs. For me, I, prior to kind of doing YouTube content, I hadn't really done much editing or filming myself. And it was just an amazing journey to kind of experience and learn that side of thing. Like, I'm not gonna say I'm nearly anywhere near as good as a professional editor or DP for that matter, but you know <laughs> what I mean? Like to, to really understand the process. And I think now for future projects that I'm gonna film as well, knowing the process so well of everything that's involved in terms of just lighting as well, you know, people forget about how important lighting is and exactly what you're saying, you know, like setting your background and everything, you know, I, <laughs> I mean, I did, there was a little bit of thought that went into this because I was just like, I'd like to have a back wall where my camera is pointing and it's a little bit nice, but it's also a bit muted. So, you know, the color is a bit muted, so it's not mm -hmm. putting focus. Is there a window next to you? Like there's yeah. that nice light on the side of your face, you know, like people don't think about like how much goes into that. No, I know. It's just like, yeah, I'll just set up the camera. But having said that, I think it's also important to know that you don't need all this to start creating. You can just mm -hmm. do it with, you know, most modern mobile phones are, have a decent enough camera for you to just turn on and start filming. The one thing I will say is if anybody ever does want to just kind of start creating content uh, like that, is to maybe focus on getting a slightly better microphone because mm -hmm. I think sound is one thing that's often lets any YouTuber down because they think they can just turn the camera on and film, which the camera is fine, as in turn the, sorry, the mobile phone on and film, which mobile phone is fine. Like the picture on that is crisp and better, but I think what's unforgivable, unforgivable is uh, sound. We literally just released a, a, an episode about that, in particular about um, like good sound versus bad sound, but we released a short film no, that's saw, like now- I saw that, I watched it. It's <laughs> Yay, thank you. <laughs> it's basically but, oh, where your sound's bad and then his sound's like crystal clear mm -hmm. and he's like, huh? So, what? Because yeah, in particular, like we we are used to like having an external microphone and all that kind of stuff. But for us, it was really fun to do that to give ourselves the ability to just be like, like we were setting up stuff for my shots, and like Alan was just like, yeah, uh, yeah, don't for leave the mic out of here. Like you don't need to set that up now. I'm like, oh my god, this is so weird not to think about. <laughs> tweaking the on-camera microphone to even be audible is the funny thing. So that's the thing that like, uh, when it comes to editing, you don't wanna have to save too much in the edit. And so during the production, like when you're filming and realizing where your hurdles can be uh, when you're new is really important because I think that's the best thing that like you or anybody online can do is just 
when you start, and like you said, when it comes to filmmaking, now you feel more confident to move yeah. on to another production. You feel more confident to do more stuff. And that just comes from not only starting, but also working with the little bits that go behind making a new thing and then iterating and if kind of evolving as a creator to realize, oh, well, in audio, if I just do noise reduction, cool, now there's not this hiss in the background. Yeah. If I just change the parametric equalizer, my voice sounds a little bit more warm and stuff like that. And you start to build on that and become a little bit more polished as you go along. But that comes from, unfortunately, you know, like... 50 videos or something like that it like, does uh, though i mean that, that's do you know what? that's the most important thing like a lot of kind of uh videos that tell you to start youtube say you know just create loads and loads of videos and people are like yeah but none of them get traction and it's not really so much for i think the youtube algorithm i think it's just to get better at creating content and filming even from where i started doing my youtube videos till now you know i coming into it, i was like well I've got a background in production. I know how this all works. Like, no, I, I knew nothing. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like being honest, you know, what I knew was not good enough. Mm -hmm. And like you say, you know, just filming and creating content and creating and reiterating and building on top of your skill set just makes you better. And I, I know I'm not completely polished at the moment. You know, I, I've got bounds and leaps to go as everyone does, but I think it's important to be self-aware mm -hmm. and also accept that, hey, maybe it's not great at the beginning, but I'm learning the process. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to just put it out there, see how it gets, how I can be better at editing. You know, there's like nuances, especially like editing YouTube video is so different from editing a short film. Oh yeah. If you're watching as a filmmaker, I don't know if you do this watching other YouTubers, but you kind of look, oh yeah, no, I like what he did there as editing. Whereas a normal viewer might just be like, oh yeah, cool. I not even noticed. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that I really like about it is that then you start seeing, like not only do you have a better appreciation because when I started out, I was like, oh, it can't be that hard. And then you actually do it and you're like, wow, just to like maybe make this not like really stilted and just awkward looking. It takes so much effort. But once you really get into it, you start to see what people do well. Like you see, uh, wow, this video just goes for like a full 10 minutes and I my attention wasn't broken. What are they doing? How do they do it? And then you tr try to like remanufacture that. And so not only do you get an appreciation for how hard it is to be a professional at that, but also then you are, you're, you're more intrigued about like, oh, well, then how do I fix this? How do I do, do it better? How do I improve my craft to get not only to there, but then maybe have a spin on it, something that I want to do that's a little bit different. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that's, that's mm -hmm. the important thing going into being YouTubers, I guess, is to find something that's popular enough that people want to watch, but also putting your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what we're doing. Because if you come with brand new content that no one's ever heard of, like it's mm -hmm. so difficult for YouTube A to kind of promote it for you and B but well, that's just basically that <laughs> like YouTube can't promote it for you because it doesn't know who to give it to and I think that's a flaw in YouTube I think I would love for YouTube to have an element to like discover like just literally says discover with new creators mm -hmm. and and it would just show new YouTubers that don't really fit into kind of categories and then people could go to that you know like the trending page but like a discover page in particular that's the thing that kind of like and I feel like anybody that like follows our stuff has probably noticed is that we try to take uh, we love talking about filmmaking and the fundamentals of it, but we found that like people are more interested and more engaged if we relate it to something that they already know, like Star Wars or Sonic the Hedgehog or now Avatar The Last Airbender, and trying to make it palatable for people that are just searching for like, oh, well, what? I, I recently started watch rewatching Avatar. What's it like? And then seeing like, oh, hey, I didn't think of it that way. Or, hey, I just saw the Sonic movie. I didn't think of how it would be from a producer's perspective or something like that. Yeah. But it's like, it's hard because that's the problem with... Uh, uh, YouTube is like you said like you can make a hundred videos and like keep working and working and working and YouTube likes that if you get uh, if you, you have the consistency they'll take notice at some point and realize that like okay cool well let's throw some of these into the feed and recommendations but overall like to be noticed at all you really do need to think like this weird marketing perspective it's a cool thing but it's a sad thing at the same time because you know gone are the days where like PewDiePie has grown exponentially, but he, he did put some thought into it, don't get me wrong, because he was one of the mm -hmm. first that started putting in new uh, thumbnails and stuff. Yeah. And making sure, you know, all his videos have thumbnails when no one else has had thumbnails. But at the same time, you know, even he will admit, like, he just cut stuff together, put thumbnails in. I don't think it's as easy to do it now. You've really, really got to have a competitive edge and you've got to think about that. And, you, you know, like you say, got to have a marketer's mind because mm -hmm. you've got to cut across the noise and it's a difficult thing to do. And I wish I knew the complete answer to that. We're, we're mm -hmm. both still learning, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, we had a long conversation about it, about just yeah, like all the tactics we're both trying to do, yeah. Exactly, and and that's the thing, you know, you've got to just keep trying, trying new things. You've got to keep keep going for it. It's, it's a marketing thing, isn't it? Like, you know, oh, yeah. testing, 
it's all about testing. If something mm -hmm. works, then you know, kind of exploit that and keep going with that. But if it doesn't mm -hmm. work, just keep testing, keep testing. That's why right now most content might be under a genre, but you'll see for a lot of new YouTubers, they'll try out different types of content. Now that can be detrimental, but also at the same time, most of the reason they're doing that is so they can kind of throw out the net and see what works. And then they find something that goes really well or it kind of a very video goes semi-viral, they go, okay, this works let's kind of focus on that a little bit more people tell the, like new youtubers like oh make whatever you want and you can and that's the the freedom of it but at the same time if you do want traction or whatever you then need to start steering it and seeing what works and seeing what the what the audience wants and like how you can yeah go semi-viral and then keep working with that I think for me in particular, because I do also, I mean, we both are working professionals. I do some drone videography and other stuff on the side. That's basically how I make my income is I work professionally for a corporate environment. And for you in particular, how do you feel about like, you've talked about the freedom of YouTube, but as an actor, what it's like the uh, to, to be a professional actor and not only how you maybe got into it, but also uh, how you feel like perpetuating that and what it's like to be a professional creative. It's, it's difficult because uh, it's such a, it's such a difficult industry. I mean, that's that's the only way I can put it for anybody. So I decided to become an actor. Um, I kind of done some acting when I was younger um, at local theaters and things. But when I kind of took it seriously was when I was in university, I did music at university, hence the guitars. <laughs> I was in uni and I was basically the second year of university towards the end of it. I just decided I, I, I'd like, love music, but I was kind of losing the passion for it. Whereas I really wanted to explore the acting side of things. So when I finished university, I kind of just went for it and just tried to learn, did as many classes as I could, tried to learn as much as I could and grinded for ages. And, you know, I was quite lucky. Um, I am quite lucky that I'm one of the lucky ones that's technically a working actor. Most of my stuff is theatre and stuff, but, you know, I have had bit parts here and there. And yeah, and it's, it's just, it's such a tough, tough industry to kind of crack because effectively, like having an agent's great, but you need to have a certain type of agent. And it's all about a numbers game. Like if you're constantly put up for auditions, you're gonna get more parts. It's, it's as simple as that. And you can do everything right. You can get your craft down to a T, but if you're not the right fit for the part, for whatever reason, look, sound, anything, you know, you don't get it. So you just gotta kind of accept that and just go with the flow. And that's why I love YouTube because it's, it's a nice creative outlet because again, you know, when you make something your profession, you kind of lose a little bit of the passion out of it. And then, you know, doing YouTube videos, stuff like this, just really reignites it for me. And like, no, this this is this is what I love doing. I love acting. I love creating effectively. Yeah, and the thing that's interesting, in my opinion, when it comes to being a creative professionally, you know, is that it's really, you really can't take it personally. When you're on YouTube and you make, a, you spend like 20 hours on a video and then someone says, oh, this is garbage. You, you like immediately take it personally. And you're just like, I spent so much time on this myself and this is like my passion. But like when it comes to working, like uh, if you don't get a part or a client doesn't like a video or it just doesn't fit 80 million things, you just kind of have to take it as, okay, well, it wasn't a good fit. Now we just need to move on. And like, man, it is when you edit professionally, like edit for a, for a client, it's exactly like that where they're just like, oh, well, this doesn't uh, fit our brand or it doesn't fit our uh, ethos and stuff like that. And you're just like, okay, cool. I gotta, we gotta move on. How can I take the 20 hours I already spent and then twist it into something that can work. And it's completely, you know, it's, it's completely uh, Im impersonal. It has to be, it has to be uh, just professional and you just got to move on and work with what they have. So yeah, definitely. Business. I want to thank you so much for coming on. Seriously, you uh, like I really enjoy your YouTube channel, but especially like talking to you about the creative process was so much fun. And I think you're doing just amazing out there. Uh, and ditto for your channel. Like if you're uh, watching this, make sure you subscribe oh, thanks, right now. Man. <laughs> I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, there will be links in the description for uh, Extinction as well as where we can find uh, Henry. But where can we find you, Henry? Oh, yeah. So on YouTube, I am Henry Does. So if you search Henry Does, you'll find my YouTube channel. If you look for me on Facebook, just search Henry Does on Facebook. You'll find my Facebook page as well for like my live gaming stuff. Looking for Extinction the Film, just type in Extinction the Film on YouTube and it should come up. Like you said, you're going to put the links in the description. So go check them out, guys. And if you like my content on my channel, don't forget to subscribe.
Yeah, please do. It was super great. And yeah, the, the short is fantastic. So guys, if you like this episode, please feel free to give it a like or a dislike. Wow. Let us know in the comments why you liked or disliked it. Let us know if you saw the short film and what you think of it and how much you love Emma Thompson because she's great. That's it from us. And I just want to thank Henry one more time. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me on here on like it's yeah, it's been awesome. Like really appreciate it. And yeah, stay safe out there. World on fire. How about yours? That's the way I like it, and I'll never get bored. Hey, now you're an all-star. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay.